TitleMatchNetwork.com. I think Kevin was a little premature, if you want my honest opinion. He was, he was going to get this push that he needed six months later rather than six months earlier. I, mean, I think things would have been different for Kevin. He was just starting to climb, uh, Kevin Nash at that time, Diesel. But, um, yeah, so then I went into Diesel. 95. Um, years, I think. I'd worked with Kevin in uh, The King of the Ring before I worked at Backlund. And I think brought a lot out of him. Like you can see a huge, huge improvement with, from Kevin Nash the time I worked with him. And you watch when I worked with him. And then you watch when he worked with me the next time. And you tell me he didn't learn. And he learned that from me. I think a lot of it from me. Uh, and I was the guy that taught him psychology and, and taught him uh, how to pace yourself for a match and how to build, build the lefts and the rights and how to swerve everybody just a little bit here and then come back over here. And I brought a lot of Kevin's um, best qualities out. And I remember he called me up before we had the King of the Ring or another, the Royal Rumble match in Florida somewhere. Right. Uh, he was bombing as champion. And mostly on account of the fact that him and Bob didn't have a good chemistry. And I remember I told him, I said, don't worry. Just trust me. And I will make sure that you don't fall any further than you already have because he was plummeting kind of as champion. And I think it shows a lot for what kind of a character I was in the ring with, with Kevin Nash, because I did like Kevin and I had respect for Kevin. I actually wanted Kevin to get older. I didn't have a problem with Kevin. And I, <clears throat> I went into that match and did everything possible to make sure that he didn't uh, lose any of his baby face edge, right. uh, to make sure he never looked too weak and at the same time, make it look like a real contest. And, and, uh, like all I know is like I always use this parallel when I was talking about Bad News Allen or Bad News Brown. If you were an eight going in the ring against Bad News Allen, and by the time you came back to the dressing room, you were a two. Whereas when Kevin Nash worked with me in, in every match, but it's in particular that one, he was about a three, and when the match was over, he was like a six. You know, he was over a little better than he was, and it was like a stopgap for him. And um, and then I can't remember what happened to Kevin after that. He dropped the belt to Sean, didn't he? Or no, maybe you know, he worked with Sean. Sean. Sean did. Sean worked with him at the WrestleMania. Of course, that's when I worked with Bob again. And I quit match, which was a disaster. I, mean, I think my worst pay per view I ever had. It wasn't Bob's fault; it was just a poor concept. Right. They with Piper and the mic and all that was awful. Uh, of course, Bob never quit. He said, "I'll call or something else." Right. Or something. I can't remember, but I I know that in the match with Kevin Nash and and Sean. They did exactly what I was talking about with Owen, that we had to make sure we didn't do. And, and Sean, I think, did it on purpose, turned himself babyface and turned Kevin heel at a time when Kevin was, was really important to his survival as champion, to not allow that to happen. And he put his trust in Sean, and Sean, uh, I think, buried him and made him kill him as a, as a babyface. And that was the end of Kevin as champion. And I don't really know what happened, who got the belt. I guess I got it from Kevin. Yeah, you beat, yeah, you beat Kevin. That's right. So I came all the way around. <clears throat> when when I took time off to go on some belt, I guess, something like that. I had some great matches with Hikushi and right. Lawler and the Suck My Toe match or whatever it was. Right, right. But they were, I enjoyed the, the matches, funny enough. They were... They were almost kind of like, I don't know if it was Pierre Lafitte or something like that, too. They were throwing right. all these grounders. You know, right. it's like, and actually, the fact, they were never grounders, but they were guys that weren't being pushed and weren't being appreciated. Like, Pierre Lafitte worked his ass off and gave me two really good matches, the pay-per-view and the next night on Raw. Uh, I worked with Akushi, who was the guy that everyone was eating up, who was just such a nice guy and could do all kinds of stuff if you just tried a little bit for him. And I always loved the matches I did with Akushi. He did a couple of things that were unbelievable. But then anyway, uh, <clears throat> all I remember is I ran an idea by Vince about um, I was trying to get Kevin over more. And I said, I think I could come back and do a babyface match with him. And I, at that time, I was watching Sabu and all these guys go crashing through his tables all the time. And I and still, I still watch it. And I go, why would anyone go through the table? Like, it never makes any sense. They, they put the table out and they straight, straighten it out and set it on the floor. And then they climb up and they do a backflip into it. It's like, it defies logic. It doesn't, it's a great spot, I guess, if you want to hurt yourself or you want to see somebody hurt himself. But it, as to why you would do it, it makes no sense. 
never did it. At least for the few times I ever saw it, I always felt sorry for some who were doing it because it never had any reasoning behind it. And I thought about it, I said, you know, if I was going to go through a crash into a table, I'd make everyone never know what, never see it coming. And I'd make it be so important. I'd make it big. I think that's a, such a pivotal part of the match. And I, said, and I thought about it, I said, it'd be great if Kevin was pulled me up and I went for a small pack and I beat him like on a fluke and I make I'm out cold kind of thing. And then he waits and waits and waits to get me. And then he, maybe when we find the work, I drop the belt back to him because that's how I always worked. I, I did, whenever I was going to beat somebody, it was always the idea of returning it, right. giving the belt back, which is the same thing I had with Sean. Um, and so that's what I thought. So I'll drop the belt back to Kevin at, at the WrestleMania. And of course, Vince calls me about two days after I give him the idea. And it's like, it's now it's his idea. Uh, it becomes not my idea anymore. And he goes, I got this idea where you do that thing with the table and you, you win the title and then you drop it to Sean at WrestleMania. So that's when the end of Kevin, like they were pulling the plug on Kevin as champion. 